Welcome to the Bishops and Rose Palaces. We are the Junior Tour Guides and we are going to be taking you on the tour of the palaces today. Here at the Earl's Palace, we will play characters who lived and worked during the time of Earl Patrick Stewart 400 years ago. You will hear those characters speak the language of Orkney Islands. They are all you meet Earl Patrick and his lady wife, the Countess Margaret, but only if we decide you're unworthy and won't upset him because of his terrible temper. Here at the Bishop Palace, we'll meet important people from across the centuries who worked and changed the ancient palace. Come with us now to meet them. Your graces, thank you for coming. I know some of you have travelled as far as nine centuries to meet these strangers who wish to know more about your palace. We will leave them in your care. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. I am St. Magnus, you may have heard of me. The beautiful cathedral behind me was built in my name. And I am Bishop William Yield. It was I who was Bishop when the cathedral was built, and I needed a new home to be built nearby the Bishop's Palace during my time. Magnus and I have travelled through the 12th centuries to meet you. I have brought with me one of my priests and a servant to serve me and tell you more about the Bishop's Palace during my time. The servant has worked and time travelled through many ages and will be able to tell you about them all. And I am Bishop Reed. I made many changes to the palace. I travelled from the 16th century to meet you. I brought my builder with me as I kept him very busy during my lifetime. Let's begin in the beginning with me. We shall take you into the Bishop's Palace and begin our story. In 1117, I was murdered by my own cousin Hacken. Hacken and I had been joint rulers of Orkney for many years. We were always very different. I loved peace and harmony, but my cousin, well, he loved nothing better than a good fight. Hacken said he could not share the rulership of Orkney with me for any longer, and we must have a meeting to work out what to do. We decided we would meet on one of the islands with only two ships each. I arrived for our meeting only to find that Hacken was sailing in with eight fully armed ships. I knew this meant the end for me. I went to the chapel to pray to God. Hacken's men found me and ordered my own cook to murder me. And all I wanted was peace for the people of Orkney. After my death, people would visit my tomb and wonderful things would happen to them. The sick would be healed by visiting my tomb and praying to me. It was soon decided that I should be named a saint. Magnus's nephew was a friend of mine. When he became ill, he wanted a cathedral to be built in honour of his peace-loving uncle. A cathedral which would be more magnificent than any of the land. I am, a, I am the bishop of this cathedral, and a bishop of such important and splendid cathedral receives many important visitors from far and wide. So that meant I needed an impressive house for them to stay in when they visited, and so the bishop's palace began to be built. Your Grace, I am sorry to see your splendid palace have changed and neglected. Well, Father Michael, that's only be expected. I did start work nine centuries ago. I must confess, William, that I made many changes to your lovely building. It was already 400 years old when I became bishop. We needed a little more room and a little more security. Come with us this way, then we'll show you how the palace has changed over the years. This was the main hall for the bishop's palace. It has changed so much over the years. It was here that the bishop entertained important guests. This servant here has seen many, a celebrity pass through its doors. We had the king of Norway himself sit here with us, although I'm sorry to say not for long. King Hakon stayed here on his way home from the battle with the Scots. The battle had not gone well and he arrived here tired and ill. Within a few days he was dead. The king was laid out here for his people to pay their last respects. His body was clothed in kingly robes and a garland was placed on his head. His servants stood all around the hall holding tapers and they said that as his people processed by as handsome and well as he did when he was alive, people were very sad that he had died here. Come on us this way and I'll show you how I brought the palace up to date. Well, for my day anyway. When I arrived, the palace was very old and been unused for a long time. These were unsettled times and I needed a new home with not just grand enough for visitors who might include the king, but also secure enough. I built the great tower behind me, Well, technically my builder here did anyway. Tell him about it, please builder. The bishop wanted a tower, I built it for him. The tower is five stories high and he even wanted his private apartments in it. 
That included his bedchamber, study and dining room for his friends, and even an ensuite toilet. Here in the Great Hall it was very grand, not one but two huge fireplaces. Bishop William, I think some of your builders were not very good. They used wooden scaffolding poles called pot logs and then just sawed them off when they were finished. You can see where some of the scaffolding poles used to be. I've heard on my time trials that Earl Patrick didn't even know the Lord Prayer. Eventually the Earl's grades do too much for King, who was executed in 1615 for treason. You see, it's traditional to save the Lord's Prayer before being executed. Legend has it that they had to delay the execution while they taught him how to say it. Later on, you'll meet El Patrick, whom you'll meet later to go over the Bishop's Palace. El Patrick mainly used this palace as a place to house the 50 guards who attended him at all times. It says something about a man who needs 50 bodyguards. Let us now meet Team 2, who are going to be playing some of the people who lived and worked in the Earl's Palace 400 years ago. In this next section, you will hear the characters speak differently than the way that Group 1 spoke. See if you can listen out and remember some of the words that are different. First, we are sure to meet the constable. He is in charge of security and a very important man. Are you there, constable? Son London, you, dust me doing a bit. This time to have awful story business. Let me help you, sir. Sir, I can tell you this time we've landed in the 21st century. Boy, boy, that's a long way through our time. No, just let me count how long it is exactly. Let's see. Um, 17, 18, 19, 20. We've travelled 400 years, sir. And who do we have here? Guards. Protect us. They could be Uncan invaders. Do you think the Arrow's Palace is as real protected in 2019 as it is in our own time? I hope so. Guards, find if they mean us any harm. I am one of 50 personal bodyguards to His Grace, the Earl Patrick, and it is my job to make sure he and his palace are kept secure. Who goes there, friend or foe? Only friend or Earl Patrick may proceed. We are safe, sir. We are just going to find out about Ledger in our own time. Oh, we all. Why do you know, say? Welcome to the Arrow's Palace, but I'm Ponsor Davy, he does security, and these are some of the servants of the house. You've already met 20 guards. These are three cooks. This is one of the household maid lasses. This is Laughlin, one of the servants of the house. And last but not least, we, we have our pretty turn rocket the youngest servant in the house. You'll find out more about his job later on. Seeing as we've come so far, I suppose we should show you strangers my hospitality. Shall we show them a room in the old place then? A grand idea, sir. Why should we begin? Well, I let him hit the security. I think we should show these strangers who will defend the palace for attack in case any of them are daft enough to think we're ready. Very wise, sir. Show them who you and your men will protect Earl Patrick and his household. Earl Patrick is very important, you can. His grandfather was King James V himself, but between you and me, come in a boot in case anybody hears us speaking. Earl Patrick is not too popular in these parts and needs all the protection he can get. He treats folk like slaves. You, lassie, what you saying to these unkind folk? No, nothing, sir. I'll see if I can tell you more later. I've got me eye on the lass. Guys, tell these folk who would defend the palace for attack. As you can see, there are holes here. We shoot through them at any of our enemies. We have so many windows in the palace, so it was easy to see whoever is coming and gone. The wooden door here is for your time, no worries. We had a stronger wooden door, and the hint it is a metal grill, called a yet. There are holes in a yet that us guards could fire our muskets through. We will defend the Earl of our lives, so don't even think about crossing me or any of the ever 49 guards to Earl Patrick. Come on then, let's show them where Fantish Palace and see for ourselves the old place is living. Before we go, lock up and you'll see the Royal Coat of Arms. It's worn away new, 
but above that is the arms of the Earls and the date 1607. Earl Patrick is all the Stuart family, close related to the royal family. Mind that on what of your day, he a man, man of wealth and power and we're all fear of him. Cooks, I'm starving, take us to your kitchen. Welcome to our kitchen, this is where we are in charge of creating vintage feasts and banquets for the Islanders guests. It looks and smells very different in your time than it does in mine. The Amy assistants are showing you their work here. Let's find out what they're doing. I'm the palace spit boy, they call me a term brocky. It's my job to stand in here by the fire and slowly turn the spit over. There is usually a muckle great boar, lamb or pig skewered onto the spit for a feast. And it's sky heavy, the fire is hot on one side of my face. Centered to the fire is always reached so everyone can sit on the term rocky. I hope you're not complaining, but you look to prepare this great episode. No ma'am, sorry. Now let's find out what the maid is doing. I'm carrying a heavy platter of food upstairs to the great hall for a feast. I have to be careful not to drop anything or cook will be mad after all her preparations. And I have to be quick so it's still warm when it reaches the great hall or Ella Patrick will be sure to get mad. Hurry up with that food last, his lordship is waiting. My men need fed quick. Yes sir, sorry sir. That blinking window, there's always someone keeping an eye on us and shouting orders for up there. It's usually the steward, you'll meet him later. He's the Earl's right hand man and makes sure everything runs smoothly in the palace. Quick new quick, the Earl is waiting. We have prepared a banquet in honour of some of the Earl's friends who are visiting us for the night. So it's very hot and busy in here. This is where fire plays when we roll the rooster. We usually have something roasted on a spit and a muck of great cauldron boiling away. I am it with soul, so it's very expensive and hard to come by in more time, but also essential. It stops our food from going off. I can get a good few months of a piece of meat that way. Over there, that's my cell cupboard. It's close to the fire to keep it dry. It's quiet in here, but my kitchen will never be quiet. The fire be crackling, I'd be shouting orders, the cauldron will be bubbling away, and all oh, the smells, the lovely smell of roast and pig and some of my fine herbs bubbling in the pot. To cover up the taste of the government, I'll meet. Hey, watch it, you cheeky and grateful Petey. Mind it doesn't get a bit hot in here. The fire and the rush and the boot and the fear of his lordship no liking one of my dishes. But I took a bath just last year, so I am as fresh as a daisy. Right, his lordship is ready to see the strangers new. Bring them up to the waiting room where we come prepare them. Oh, you are lucky to see the earth. You must be brave or gait or in deep trouble new. You keep your hands off the silver in the strong room next door. That's where the earl keeps all his best silver. You also pass for a while safely inside the palace where for attack and they are in here for a while with still fresh water. Oh, and you keep your noses out of the cellars in the corner. That's where we're stacks of food and barrels of wine are stored. The folk at Orkney pay the owl in food rather than money. They bring fish, vegetables, mainly tatties and meat, cheese, milk, mefe, kai, sheep, chicken, rabbit or deer. So we hope you brought something for the owl. Hurry up, Nui, you must have come waiting. We'll lead the way. This is the great hall where his lordship awaits. This is the waiting room. Folk who want to see the earl or who have been summoned by him wait here nervously before they are called in. Over here we have a basin. One of my jobs is to fill up a jug of water for the well downstairs and make sure everyone washes their hands before coming to see the earl. And there is a curtain across here for privacy and to keep some of the drafts out. Look up. You can see the roof is brightly decorated in stone that almost looks a bit like wooden beams. In wartime it was brightly decorated and painted. This room makes ordinary folk feel fearful. They might be thinking, if this is the waiting room, then what will the great hall ahead be like? I've seen muckle men whacking in their boots standing right here. And no wonder, have you heard about the Earl Patrick? He's a terrible temper on him. He flies into rages, not just with his folk or his servants, but with his own family as well. 
If he dare to crawl him or question him, he stamps his feet and scratches and tears his hair out. He is trumpet to play to mark his arrival at every meal. We often bow and scrape, but it's the folk are in tears to feel sorry for. He forced his tenants to build this palace, giving them neither food, money, nor drink in return. They just need to need their crossing. He isn't too popular around here. Some folk have even complained to the king. Let's hope their elders not find out who are they'll be in some trouble. Enough of all of you. It wasn't any you who were pleading to the king, was it? I can only let two and loyal friends meet his lordship. Who goes there? I trust he's a good loyal friend, says so lordship, and happy and prepared to meet him. Aye, sir. They're ready. Good. We are the stewards of the palace, the earl's right-hand men. We will now take you in to meet his lordship. Welcome to the hall. Come and gather round. I am the Countess Margaret Stewart, the wife of Earl Patrick. You may call me Lady Margaret. Why? Have you no manners? You should be bowing and curtsying. I best seat you quickly before the Earl comes through. I am the lady in waiting to the Countess, and I know all about bows and curtsies. Gentlemen, you shall bow low and use your right hand to make a graceful gesture which should take off your hat should you be wearing one. Now, ladies, put your right foot behind your left and curtsy low, bowing your head as you do so. Now, remember, when that all comes through, you must bow and curtsy. Here comes his lordship. Welcome to my palace, strangers. This was my great hall where I held my banquet celebrations and, of course, trials. It looks very different to my time. Who has destroyed it? Was it you? You look as so though you could be trouble. I'll have you thrown in pit because of you. Now, dear, over a century, your, pa your beautiful palace has been destroyed. And only you, who ordered this, this palace to be built, to describe it for what it was like for us. Well, I guess you're right. This is the most important room in the palace. I dealt with my official business here. Tenants come to pay the rent, and we also hear trials here and give out punishments. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's my people not being loyal to me, failing to pay their rent or stealing from my land. Who do we have here, Stuart? My lord, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. Why are you sorry for this nibbling little? I haven't yet brought you the meal I paid for rent this month. My wife has been very ill Enough. and I couldn't. I don't want to hear excuses. You're a little more than a thief. You live on my land and you'll pay me what you owe with interest. I need some work done in this palace. You will work for me one month, no pay, but I will make up what you are due. Take him out of my sight. You call me a thief? You stole 200,000 pounds worth of stone from your neighbor's quarry and then forced us to build this palace with no food, drink, or pay. Enough, how dare you speak to an arrow like that? We will make a complaint to the king! How dare he? He will suffer for that. So, as you can see, trials are held here and justice given out. But we also fun have fun in this room. We entertain important guests with feast, music and dancing. The hall looks so different now. Perhaps I need to describe how it was, my lady. Yes, well firstly there is a room. Decorated beautifully, shown sing from the Bible. There were wooden panels and rich tapestries to keep the cold winter dra drafts out. The windows were glass and the curtains to keep out the drafts. At the bottom was a great tall three light window. Ah, but I see we still have our guests here being entertained. This is my sister, Lady Jean. Lady Jean, can you start with our banquet here to you? I am Lady Jean Livingston, and I have been invited to stay with the Earl and the Countess as their guest. They have laid on a great feast in my honour. The hall looks magnificent. There are candles and flickering lights everywhere you look, and not one but two great fires roaring and crackling. The Earl has brought out his fine silver plates which glitter in the candlelight. The Earl and his wife have arranged for entertainment as tonight is a special occasion. There will be musicians playing from a special gallery above our heads and later there will be dancing which is just as well as they have been so well fed. You are honoured to have been allowed this far into the palace. This in the room next door are the Earl's private rooms. And here he entertains private parties for his most liked and trusted friends. Do you like it? Well, do you? I am very pleased with it, especially these windows. They are called Oreo windows. 
Here we have three sections moving in different directions. This is so I can admire the view. This is also helpful for the constable and his guards. They can see in more than one direction. There are many who think of attacking the palace and wish harm to the arrow. Ha! Let them try. I am safe here in my palace. The constable and his guards think he can use three swords to fire at enemies. But I've told them, the merely decoration. You see, there's a new trend for buildings all throughout Europe. Ones with many decorations, and our palace is the height of fashion. And I do like to keep up with the latest trends. His lordship's comfort is of utmost importance, of course. As we make our way through to his bedchamber, you will see there is a small room. You may look in. This is his latrine, his toilet. There are others in the palace for guests and family. This is the ideal place for the earl's bedchamber, because it is the first room away from the door. Attackers will have to fight their way past the log guards to reach the spot of the palace. That's enough of all this talk about tapas to us. Anyone would think I'm unpopular. I'm the owl and my people must love me. These strangers have seen enough. I'm tired of them now. Of course, your lordship. We, we all take them away. We've enjoyed travelling to your time to see our palaces. We hope you've enjoyed visiting our palaces and listening to our lives in the past. Our group used words used in Orkney. You may have heard Unkin, which means strange, Fantouche, which means fancy or amazing, and Geit, which means stupid. If you'd like to book a tour, please contact Lightness, Skull and Kirkwall. 